Good morning. Welcome to the YouTube home of Light on the Corner Church. We're so glad that you joined us. It's good to see you out in YouTube land. My name is John Karn. No H in John, J-O-N. Karn, and I'm the pastor here at this wonderful church located beautifully, situated beautifully here in downtown Montrose. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit like and subscribe and keep those cards and letters coming. We love to hear from you. Uh, I wanted to say something I should have said before, but I want to give a big shout out to the producer of this telecast that goes around the world, Lalani Karn, our sound man pardon me, sound girl, who keeps everything going. And then also, uh, our video editor, uh, Will Ware, who is married to Regina Ware, who helps him, but thank you to Will and Regina. We have a very small staff. And then to Lalani, of course. Everything good that you see on here is Lalani's doing. Anything bad is mine, I'm afraid. That's what it seems like to me. Anyway, thank you to you people. Appreciate it. Why don't we dive in? I am uh, looking at, we're looking at salvation, and this happens to be a communion Sunday here at Light on the Corner Church, so my mind is going that way. And, uh, oh, I also wanted to say thank you to the uh, band. Thank you, gentlemen. Wonderful music. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Fits uh, perfectly together with the sermon today. It's very nice of them to play that one. Uh, what a beautiful fit. And then if you like country western music, that'll be our second song uh, after the sermon. So stay tuned. Anyway, I'm going to dive into Ephesians 5. Verses 1 to 2. But first I'd like to begin with a story, rather harrowing story. In 2005, Shin Dong-hyuk 
became the only person to ever escape from a total control zone internment camp in North Korea and then lived to tell the tale. Because Shin was born in the prison, he knew no other life. In his mind, the entire world was Camp 14. And there were only two types of people in the world, prisoners and guards. You were born as one or the other, and you lived your entire life that way. He later said he never considered escape because he always assumed that the society outside the camp would be similar to that inside the camp. So why escape? Every day, Shin was told what to do, and he did it. For 23 years, he was always hungry and tired from daily hard labor. But Shin said everything changed in one day. A new prisoner named Park was brought to Camp 14, and with him came tales of a different world on the other side of the electric fence. He talked about living in cities and traveling to China. But one particular thing Park talked about defined freedom in Shin Dong-hyuk's mind more than anything else. Broiled chicken. I'm thinking about it right now. Park told him that outside the electrified fence of his world was another world where you could eat broiled chicken. And you could eat it any time you wanted. Shin had never eaten chicken, but he knew what chicken tasted like. It tasted like freedom. So this quest for broiled chicken led Shin and Park to attempt to escape over the electrified fence. Sadly, Park touched the fence first and immediately died. An untold number of volts coursed through his body and stopped his heart. But his body then became a bridge over which Shin was able to climb to freedom. Shin Dong-hyuk is no longer a prisoner, I'm glad to say. He's our brother in Christ, I'm glad to say. And he now lives in South Korea. He got married and had a baby too. He now lives in South Korea and he eats broiled chicken whenever he wants. This chicken, along with his freedom, was purchased by a friend who gave his life for him. Keep that true story in your mind while we pray. Heavenly Father, Prepare our hearts to sit at your table today. We come fresh from the world and its values. So we need a fresh reminder of the power of your love. You tell us to walk in love. Show us the way. And now, help us to preach, I ask. In Jesus' name, amen. When I read the story of Shin and his friend Park, I can't help but be reminded of these two wonderful verses from Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. That's how the NASB puts it, New American Standard puts it. Here's another version. Therefore, 
become imitators of God as beloved children and live in love just as also Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a fragrant smell. That's precisely what the Greek says. Just like that. Fragrant smell from the Lexham English Bible. Here's another. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love as the Messiah also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. That's the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Here's our text and what I'm preaching from today, the New International Version. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. That's beautiful English, and that's precisely what the text says. So hats off to the New International Version here. Well, Park ended up sacrificing himself for Shin. No doubt they both hoped to escape, but one gave his life for the other. How fitting, before sitting at the Lord's table. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. With this sacrifice in mind, Paul tells us to follow God's example, imitate him, even as Christ did, to walk in the way of love. Well, what does this mean exactly? This is rather picturesque language. Put it this way, since God was pleased with the offering of his son, we can likewise please him by having the same attitude. This does not mean, of course, that we can achieve salvation for others or even ourselves by some sacrificial act. But it does mean that giving ourselves lovingly and at some personal cost for the good of others and for the glory of God is pleasing to him. Christianity hinges on the death of one for another, of Jesus for you and me. And the spirit of this amazing sacrifice permeates our fellowship together, infusing it with love. The kind of love that Jesus demonstrated at Calvary. So as dearly loved children... We walk in the way of love, even as Jesus loved us. By the way, they'll know we are Christians by our love. By this will all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Let me illustrate this with another story. Pastor Wayne Cordero tells a story about a church member named Bully. Not Billy, Bully, spelled just like it sounds, who was a gentle man who got his nickname from his days of barking orders at construction sites. After Cordero noticed the scars on Bully's hands, he asked him, Bully, how do you get so many cuts on your hands? So Bully told the following story about the tsunami that hit the Hawaiian island of Hilo in 1960. After a, magnifi uh, after a magnitude 9.5 earthquake struck many miles away in Chile, 
took 15 hours for the waves to get to Hawaii. This is what Bully said. He said, I was working above the bay that our home overlooks. One morning, the tide receded so much that the children ran out to catch fish in the tide pools left behind. We'd never witnessed the tide so low before, and it gave the kids an unprecedented opportunity to play and romp through the reefs that now protruded above the waterline like newly formed islands in the ocean. You know where this is going, don't you? But what we didn't know was that the ocean was preparing to unleash the largest tsunami our sleepy little town had ever experienced. Within minutes, a 60-foot wave charged our unsuspecting town with a force we'd never seen before. The hungry waters rushed inland. Like bony fingers, the waters scratched and pulled homes, cars, possessions, and people back into a watery grave. The devastating power of that wave left in its wake twisted buildings, shattered windows, splintered homes, and broken dreams. I ran as fast as I could to our home, where I found my wife sobbing uncontrollably. Robbie is missing, she said. I can't find Robbie. Robbie was our six-month-old child who was asleep in the house when the ocean raged against our helpless village, and I was frantic as I looked over the shore, strewn with the remains of the frail stick houses that were now piled in heaps along the sands. Realizing that another wave may soon be following, I began running on top of the wooden structures, tearing up pieces of twisted corrugated roofs that were ripped like discarded remains of a demolition project. I tore up one piece after another, running over boards and broken beams until I heard the whimpering of a child under one of the mattresses that had gotten lodged beneath an overturned car. I reached under and pulled up my little son, Robbie. And I tucked him under my arm like a football player running for the end zone. And then I sprinted back over the debris until I reached my wife. And together we ran for higher ground, hugging our child and one another and thanking God for his mercy. Just then my wife said to me, Bully, your feet and hands, you're covered in blood. Well, I had been wearing tennis shoes and I didn't realize that as I ran over the wreckage, I was stepping on protruding nails and screws that had been exposed in the rubble. And as I pulled back the torn, corrugated roofing looking for Robbie, the sharp edges tore into my hand. I was so intent on finding my boy that nothing else mattered. Dear ones, Jesus came to find you. He was so intent on finding you, nothing else mattered. And get this, he thinks the pain was worth it to find you.
And so Hebrews says, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12. So, dear ones, there's an example to follow. Love sent Jesus to the cross. And the nails didn't hold him there. He's Lord of all. Rather, love held him there. So let me ask you this. What's it like? Dear ones, being loved like that. Follow God's example and walk in the way of love. Let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, you know it's much easier for us to love ourselves than to love others. We are who we think of first. But the supernatural power of Christ bids us do something much harder. Help us to walk in the way of love, empowered by the memory of your sacrifice. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.